Hello! In this week's text from the Gospel according to Luke, Jesus argues with a group called the Sadducees. Some you would say, well, what's the big deal? See, Jesus seems to argue with a lot of people in the Gospel. Well, it's a little different, I would say, because um, in the Gospel of Luke, that's the only time Jesus has a confrontation with the Sadducees. And the Sadducees were, from what we can understand, um, member of higher society, uh, priestly class, aristocracy. And the big difference uh, from the other uh, Jewish group of uh, their time, they were, I would say, the literalist. They would read the scripture from a literal point of view and base their all uh, religious life on scripture. More specifically, they acknowledge the five first book of what we have of the Bible, uh, or what is called the five book of Moses, uh, Genesis, um, Exodus, Leviticus, Number, Deuteronomy. And the question uh, for them is, if it's mentioned in this book, it's good. If it's not found in this book, not good at all. So they saw this Jesus coming and preaching the temple, and they want to, con especially about resurrection, which is not found in the five first books of the Bible. And they went to confront him with a question about marriage. Some would say, once again, marriage seems to be a subject of uh, argumentation and division. Nothing new would say. And he came with this um, question about uh, what if uh, a wife is married, die without a son, well, uh, Deuteronomy seems to indicate that she has to marry her brother-in-law so he can give her a son, so the lineage can continue, but whatever the second uh, brother died, marry the third, third brother died, and so on, so on, marry the seventh brother, and they would say, well, and if you're in your resurrection of yours, whose wife she's going to be? And that was probably an old argument that was floating around, and probably the Sadducees were very proud of themselves and said, yeah, put that in your pipe and smoke it, young man. You know, that kind of proud. And Jesus gave a lengthy answer according to the scripture, but what I gather from this is God is the God of the living, not the God of the death. And it makes me think, makes me think, make us think. Do you believe in God or do you believe in, in the Bible? Um, you know, it's, it's, it's people who are alive or books who are not. Um, and also challenge us, say, okay, God's good news for the world. That is to stop like three centuries ago, 2,000 years ago, and then no more revelation, no more knowledge, no more. Or we have a God that keep, who created and is keep creating. Do we give a veto on everything religiously to people who died in the past? Do we give a veto to a book? Or we work with the people? And claiming that God is a God of living, that means that God cares about us today, what we we'll live today, the challenge of today. And what is more important is our reality, how we address the world, how we engage the world, and, and how do we live this good news in the world and not according to a book that gives us a lot of wisdom but might not address everything that we live today. And that's a huge challenge for us Christian. Do we focus our good news for today or we always go back? Do we say, well, the Bible said so, so no more conversation, no more. That's the end of everything. Or do we say, okay, the Bible says that. And what does it mean for today? And I guess that's where the challenge, I guess that's where the words of Jesus wants to lead us. So that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for watching. I'm Stéphane Vermette, the Lectionary Man. And until next time, take care of yourself. Bye-bye.